so friends uh, 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 welcome to this special session today we are in conversation with nalini kanta rajkumar president of uh, community network for empowerment and an uh, inspiring uh, advocate for uh, human rights of people living with hiv hepatitis since years in uh, manipur in india yes. and uh, welcome kanta and uh, as aids 22 uh, is about to begin so we have amongst us shobha as well uh, who is on site and i am joining in virtually and kanta will also be there at 822 so be welcome to meet him and this session will also stream on apple podcasts amazon music google podcasts youtube etc so please do uh, uh, you know follow there and so uh, kanta can you please tell us about a very important report which we read and i'm so proud that uh, community network for empowerment took the leadership of setting up uh, community treatment observatories so kanta please tell us about more about this report why was setting up community treatment observatories on hiv hepatitis so important for people in manipur how has it impacted the hiv hepatitis programs uh, so please over to you thanks Thank you so much, Bobby. Hello. Hello, can you yes. hear me? Ah, yes, okay. we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So this CTO project was implemented last year. The idea behind of why we have taken up, you know, this initiative is uh, National Health Control Program Phase 1 started since 1992. Then 1990, 1999, National Health Control program phase two implemented in Manipur. Then in, from 2007, NSCP three came up. So ART program was a part of NSCP two, which was begun in 2014. So number of PLSIB that Manipur Status Control Society had is 28,000. Whereas number of people registered in the ART center is 14,000 something. And the number of people who are actively on treatment is given as 13, 1,688. So the gap between the number of people tested positive and the number of people who are on ART. And coming to hepatitis C, this is one example. And still now, this is a program which is almost two decades old. There is still a problem in, you know, in terms of assessing viral load test. There is uh, still a issue of ARV stock out. And there is still a you know, treatment, so many treatment assess barrier we have in terms of assessing baseline investigation tests, viral load tests, frequent ART stock up. Today also I take a case study of two patients from who are on treatment since 2005. They are on second line ART now. They are no more given medicine by the ART center due to stock out. So the patient who is on Abakavir, Lami, Budin, Etazanavir and Ritonavir are being given the uh, Tenophobir, Lami, Budin, and Jolite, the Gravir. This is what actually happening now in India is not a treatment. It is just a crime, you know, just to manage internally. See, patient on PI are giving a medicine with, you know, the, uh, with different residues. So, so many things are happening around. Uh, every year there is an evaluation happening and the evaluation are doing by the government itself or the by the NACO. No community, we have not, we have not seen, you know, they are, uh, the way they are doing evaluation is not participatory approach. We have never seen people living with HIV. We have never seen people who inject drugs involved in the monitoring and evaluation process. Then on the other side, hepatitis C, when we look into the prevalence, the prevalence is very high among the drug users in Manipur. Whereas, since it's uh, no, since the program rolled out in 2019, the number of people who are on Hep C treatment in Manipur is very low. So we just want to understand, you know, the treatment assess barrier in terms of HIV and hepatitis C. In order to understand the gap, the existing gap under the national program, what HIV and hepatitis C. We have just come up with an idea, seeking technical and little financial support from Trip Asia and ITPC. We have just, we just did it as a, you know, pilot project since last year. And how we did was the, you know, method of collecting information was uh, both qualitative and quantitative data. Quantitative data we seek from the government and qualitative 
data is where we are collecting information from the service receiver and service provider. That is how we collect the information uh, in, uh, in two different ways. One is focus group discussion and the other one is the one-to-one -one interaction. This is how we collect the information and Street Asia and ITBC help us to analyze those findings. So now the second phase is going on. Uh, we started from January, now it's July and this will be ending. The second phase will be ending in December 2022. And I think this initiative is really helping community to understand the existing gap accordingly we see after we identify the gap what we are doing is we have already started you know advocating government to make the necessary you know changes that we are expecting to increase the uptake for both hiv and have c treatment right right so uh, thanks kanta so um, um is there any so like you are already advocating for um, changes right based on the phase one um, outcomes yeah okay and is there any any change which you have seen since january to july this is july early july yeah uh, in uh, hiv and hepatitis program in the state see earlier it takes 30 to 45 days to get hepatitis C viral load report. So this is one of the major treatment assess barrier group, which is putting away people from treatment. See, how can we expect drug user to wait for their RNA report for more than 30 days? So now they reduce it to seven days maximum, five to seven days, uh, hepatitis C viral load report. Very good. And yeah. And, and peer support staff, which was yet to be recruited for the last two years. Now, there is already, they, they have already finished identifying the peer support staff from the community, which will be engaging soon in all the model treatment center under the National Viral Hepatitis Control Program. Okay. So these are some of the area which we are, where we are advocating the government. And another challenge is, you know, making mandatory of outpatient department ticket for uh, initiating hep C treatment. This is now in the process. And uh, when the OST was spoke out in Manipur, we filed a complaint at Manipur State Human Rights Commission. Manipur State Human Rights Commission issued a notice. Then immediately the Manipur State Health Control Society, you know, they managed a stop gap. Uh, at least, uh, See, we are the one who is at least trying to knock the government door. This is one benefit that we are. So every time they are now, you know, uh, we, our responsibility is just to keep them alert every time. Right, right, right. Absolutely. And this is a very important uh, responsibility for every citizen. And it's great that you are, you know, uh, leading it. So, uh, uh, Kanta, I, we all were all, then while we were reading this report, we also thought it is so important for these reports to be written by community themselves. This is what makes this report so special. This is not it's the data from the community. Shoba, Madam, often calls qualitative data as data with a soul. It is like a data with a heart. And not just numbers, because that is where the reality lies. So, do you? So, we are just imagining like community-led monitoring, community treatment observatory, community-led processes. Uh, how uh, was it empowering for the people themselves? How? Do, what was the experience like being involved with this process? Is it empowering? Not empowering? Positive? Like how capacity? You know? Can you please share, elaborate on that? Yeah. I think we are empowering the community and this project also helped us to, you know, uh, encourage our community to come to Quan Legal Aid Clinic, to, you know, to file more complaint. See, we have a legal aid clinic, uh, which is constituted under Manipur State Legal Service Authority. Uh, but the number of cases filing here is very low. So with the help of this project, we are we also got an opportunity to empower the community by, you know, by giving them information like we can provide you free legal aid whenever there is an issue of, uh, you know, any right violation. It can be right to inheritance. It can be right to health. So, and uh, at the same time, we also got the opportunity to make them more understand about what national program is. 
and what is your right on this? What is your duty on this? See, people are simply going to hospital to collect the medicine. That is uh, their source. Seventy percent of them are not aware of the medicine that they are taking. So we are just, you know, we take the opportunity to empower them that it is important for you to understand what medication you are taking, what is the name of the medication you are taking. Otherwise, there could be a problem in the long process. And many of them are, you know, having very less information on the benefit of isonazide preventive therapy. Many of them collect the medicine from ART center. No one is taking the medicine at all. So we just make them understand about what TB infection is, what TB disease is, what benefit are you going to, you know, uh, what is the benefit of taking IPT? So many advantages we are getting while trying to collect the uh, information of service care. Right, right. And thanks a lot for mentioning IPT. So uh, that, uh, you know, uh, makes me wonder is, uh, do you think uh, co community treatment or the observatories should also expand to cover TB services? Because, uh -huh. it, you know, hepatitis, HIV, TB are so linked. So I'm just wondering, like, yeah. Yeah, in second phase, we are planning to cover, uh, you know, collecting of information related with TB. Already, bedaculin and delaminate is now available under national program. People are not aware of it. Rather than giving this medicine to the patient, they are giving, you know, still the injection canamycin, which is already, you know, rejected by the WHO. But uh, this TB department are still giving injection therapy for the MDR uh, to, to the MDR cases. So uh, it is also necessary to include TB related service in the process, according to me. Yes, totally agree with you. Like non injectable treatment and shorter course treatment, which are WHO backed and the government of India is endorsing it. It should reach the people and there should be no delay on that. Totally, totally agree with you. And uh, so uh, coming to, towards the end, like, um, as you know, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, Shobha, please. Uh, Kanta, I wanted to ask you what about DTG? Is, has that been rolled out and all those who are eligible for it, are they getting it? See, DTG is a uh, rollout and as per the, you know, data that we have collected in the first one, Many of them are still switched to DTG. I don't know the reason why. Many people are aware, you know, and this project helped us to motivate them to go and tell doctor immediately to change from JLN to DTG. So if we can do this kind of activity in a larger scale, it would be more better. We, we just did it, you know, as a pilot in a few districts of Manipur and, uh, you know, uh, the number of people that we cover was little limited according to me, because more problem will be there in Hill District of Manipur. And we are giving more priority emphasis to the people of urban, not the Hill. Uh, Hill District, we have just covered one district that is Kankupi, but the more problem will be in Hill District, I believe. And it, just, sorry, yes, yes, continue please, yes. The DG transition is happening, but not yet cover all the people. Some of them are still uh, on the old regimen. Awesome. And one more question, uh, Kanta, when I was going through the report, um, it says that the number of people who were screened for HCV during March, September 2021 was 1624, 1624. And that during October, December, it increased to 10,372. So that is good, but can you ha help us understand how the screening went up six times more in three months time? At the same time, the uh, number who got HCV RNA viral load test report in few days, those who tested positive for HCV, those who were started on treatment, those who completed HCV treatment, and those who got uh, sustained biological response test, that number decreased very much. The number tested or screened increased. So I just couldn't understand that very yeah. clearly. Uh, there could be a query uh, of our quantitative data, which we have collected from National Health Mission. There could be an error in that. And one thing I can share with you with regard uh, uh, regarding that matter is the number are increasing now more because those people who are 
you know, uh, on uh, uh, who are on treatment out of their pocket expenses after starting for one month, many of them started coming to the national program. The, this is one reason why the number of people still suddenly come up. Even then, we we have also some doubt with the report that National Health Mission provided to us. So this is this can be another uh, advocacy area for porn. So, uh, so Kanta, coming towards the end, uh, can you tell us, uh, because you are going to the AIDS 22 uh, conference also, so we would like to know more, uh, as you know, the, the theme of the AIDS 22 uh, conference is uh, re-engage and follow the science. So re-engage with whom and how to follow the science? Like I uh, so can you please elaborate on that? Thanks. Uh, see, in any conference every year we have different theme, but uh, Kwon as one of the grassroots local organization based in Manipur, we never follow with the theme, theme year. Most, most of the time they are just keeping the theme just for NAMSA year. Here what we did is uh, every time we try to come up with uh, our own theme whenever we observe World as Day or World Hepatitis Day. And the main purpose of why I will be there is to present one of the innovative models that we have just come up recently, which is same day hepatitis test and treat. And the uh, abstract was selected for oral presentation. And the, uh, the same, uh, this one, uh, testing, uh, this testing and treatment model was presented last year in Geneva, also during World Hepatitis Summit. And today, Dr. Rivari also just called me up to share the same thing for three minutes during 20, uh, their WHO World Hepatitis Observance and the INSU conference, which will be at Scotland in October. For that also, this model has been selected for oral presentation 15 minutes. So we have, this is one of the biggest achievements for porn and we can, the 100% treatment linkages was made possible through this innovative model. We started, see, screening, diagnosis, and giving the treatment on the same day. The median time taken was six hours, 49 minutes. We could have decreased the median time to more than 40 to 50 percent if we have enough, you know, infrastructures, like more extractors for true net mole biometric. So that was some of the limitations that we have in terms of infrastructure. That is the reason why the median was the the time the, from screening till initiation of treatment was six hours, 49 minutes. So this, uh, this was, uh, I think the first of its kind among the drug user community in the entire globe, I guess. Yes, absolutely. And, and so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And see, and while doing this same, same day test and same day, test and treat of hepatitis C, we also include hepatitis B in the process. I, I mean, while screening the drug user, we screen for both hep C and hep B. And what we there and what we observed from the entire process was we came to know there were 88% people who inject drug who are susceptible to hepatitis B virus. So we have all vaccinated them following the WHO, you know, rapid regimen dose of 0721 days. So from this initiative, what we learned is it, uh, it is high time now for us to start giving priority to hepatitis B where we can, you know, go for mass, mass vaccination among the drug user community to help us eliminate by 2030. 88% hepatitis B susceptible is really, very high, but we vaccinated them all. Oh, that's, that's huge. Uh, you know, contribution, especially from the community. And let's hope governments, uh, you know, follow the model more. You know, it is very, very important to hold governments to account and and uh, they need to keep the promise. And let us hope that a go they don't shift the goalpost. You have seen goalposts shifting over the last 20, 30 years. Kanta, let us hope they don't do it now. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Like, 
Sorry to interrupt you. 28 July, we will be releasing a video uh, in connection with the same day TSM tweet, which will be released at World as uh, this one uh, as conference 2022 okay. in Montreal. Using this video, we uh, we are now uh, also in the process of advocating government to replicate this model under the national uh, viral hepatitis control program. Wonderful. See, unless uh, we replicate this model under the national program, the treatment uptake will be still low. Right, absolutely, totally agree. And this model is so important. Actually, you know, uh, this makes so much more sense. There should be no delay between uh, testing and, uh, you know, care pathway. What, uh, and um, if we are really serious about delivering on the promise. So thanks a lot, Kanta. Anything else which you would like to add or? Oh, we can keep in touch anytime since All right. Since... Okay. Yeah, now we are in touch. So yes, absolutely. And Shobha, ma'am will be there in uh, Montreal. Uh, so oh, both of you, all of you are a team. So and uh, looking Thank forward to you. more Montreal. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kanta. Thanks. Bye. Bye.